Good. Okay, so the uh, moral of the the end of last lecture, which is here, is that um, it, it's it's a crucial point. Um, once you discretize and do the path integral for a theory um, defined that evolves in a Newtonian time or in a background time or in a, uh, in a physical time, then uh, the continuous limit is obtained uh, by taking the number of steps to infinity and bringing a uh, constant to its critical value. Okay? Which is a general way of thinking about that. But when you do the same for a uh, theory uh, which is uh, written in a parameter time, um, there is no critical value to take. And uh, the uh, limit is just the limit in which you get the number of, um, you, you take the number of variables uh, to go to infinity. So the, dis the difference between this formula, which is n going to infinity, and this formula, which is n going to infinity, and omega epsilon going to zero. And this is, uh, uh, this is the core of the distinction between quantum gravity and quantum field theories between spin foam and lattice QCD. Lattice QCD, in front of the action, you have the lattice spacing that you have to take, or, or the, the young mill co coupling constant that you have to take to zero, to the, to the, to the critical value. Uh, here, not. So let me, this is a super simple example, of course. This is harmonic oscillator discretized uh, with independent um, Q and T uh, variables. Let's do that for general relativity. Uh, uh, without going to the quantum theory, just, just uh, to the full quantum theory. Um, and uh, there's a very clean way of viewing this, which is what Reggie did in the 60s or 70s, uh, very early, when uh, uh, Tullio Reggie did the first clean uh, discretization of uh, general relativity, um, which is called Reggie Calculus. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not going into all the details, but uh, uh, is important because it shows uh, how you discretize the theory without a parameter and uh, uh, what is the truncation uh, in. And it's important because uh, to do the classical limit of the loop quantum gravity transition amplitudes, that's intermediate step. So it's, it gives exactly the clean, um, um, the clean uh, intermediate step connection between AQG and classical general relativity. So what Reggie did uh, is uh, to, um, his idea was to take uh, a, a Riemannian manifold uh, and uh, truncate it, discretize it, um, and uh, in terms of the uh, discretization, write the Einstein-Hilbert uh, uh, action or write the Einstein equations uh, uh, in terms of the of discretized variables. And the way he did it is to uh, uh, is the following: um, uh, uh, the, the simple way is, is is to think in two D first. In two D, you start with. Uh, 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 you discretize your 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 uh, two-dimensional uh, space with triangles, and uh, you assume that uh, all the triangles are flat. And given a, a, a curved surface, uh, you can take small enough triangles so they are flat, and they reproduce the. And the uh, red idea is to use as variable the length. This is of this uh, segment. Uh, we shouldn't call them links because uh, uh, they do not correspond at all to the links of the discretization for a reason or for the link of the LQG for a reason I'll say in a moment. Um, where is curvature? Well, it's very easy because uh, uh, if you have the, th the, the, the three links, you can compute this angle. If you have these three links, you can compute this angle. You can compute this angle, uh, this angle, this angle, this angle, and clearly. If uh, uh, curvature here is uh, is the uh, the fact uh, that the sum of these angles do not sum to uh, to pi, uh, they can sum to less or more than two pi, and that's how you uh, you get curvature. 
So uh, uh, this angle here, let me call it theta, you can write explicitly in a function of, uh, as a function of the three L's around it. This is just elementary geometry, right? This Euclidean geometry. And uh, uh, with that, you can, you can compute uh, delta, which is uh, 2 pi minus the sum uh, around of all the theta, uh, uh, all, 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 all the angles. And this is a discretized version of the curvature. That's how Reggie discretized the curvature. And this is one of these for each point. Now, when you go to three dimension, you have uh, tetrahedra. You do exactly the same game. And uh, uh, now um, you still use as variable the length. Okay? If you have the sixth length, you have the geometry of this thing. So from the sixth length, you can compute these angles here, the dihedral angles, this, this angle here. Um, and uh, when you have a, a, a number of tetrahedra around this bone here, um, you have the same formula. So, so you have the angles, the function of L, and uh, you have a curvature, but now the curvature sits on one of these things here. Okay? So in two dimensions, the, 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 the curvature sits on this, uh, these things here. In, four, in, in, uh, uh, in, in three dimensions. In four dimension, um, you have uh, uh, four synthesis. And now, uh, if you have a four simplex, it's more complicated to view. It's bounded by uh, five tetraedra, and between two tetraedra, there is a phase. And now, of course, in four dimension, uh, around the face, there aren't just two tetraedra, but uh, you have uh, a, 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 a you can make a link. Uh, uh, you, you, you can go around the face with uh, uh, with tetraedra. If you think um, that you have coordinate. Uh, uh, x, y, z, t in four coordinates, two uh, determine the face, the other two you can go around it. So the, the, the triangle is a point in respect to the other two coordinates, you can go around it. So you have, it's, it's the same thing. Um, around the four simplex, you have uh, two tetraedra. These two tetraedra have two normals around in, in the flat geometry of the four simplex. This gives an angle associated to the face between the two um, uh, tetraedra, right? When you, uh, you go all around this face with all possible four simplex, you still the tetraedra around, you have all these angles, and it's the same formula. Okay. And now the angles are functions of uh, 10 uh, segments, which are around a uh, for simplex. There are some elementary geometry uh, formulas, and uh, uh, the um, curvature is sits on the triangles. Okay, and then, so this is what Reggie did uh, very simply. So uh, and then he also proved something quite remarkable that um, if you take the following expression which is uh, uh, the sum over all the triangles in this four-dimensional uh, triangulation. And uh, uh, you, uh, for, for each triangle, you take the area uh, of the triangle, which, of course, you know if you have all, it's a function of all the the, the, the length of, of the links. So the, the, this Reggie action here is a function of all the length of all these uh, uh, this segments here. Um, and you multiply it uh, by the angle uh, uh, um, uh, The deficit angle, this delta, associated to this triangle, okay, you go around. Um, you get an expression which, up to details, I'm just giving you the the the, the sketch of the of the story. I'm not going. There's some some details I'm skipping. This is a number. It's a number that uh, depend only on the L. 
So if all this L approximated some geometry, g mu nu, of x, this is like a number computed out of the geometry. If you think for a while, what could it be? It's a number that uh, depend on the g, depend on the curvature, sort of measure how much curvature there is. It's local, because it's a sum of... Uh, so it has to be some integral on, 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 on the manifold of something local, Lagrangian, which depends on the curvature. There are many things that could be. So in the limit, the only thing that it could be is the Einstein-Hilbert action of the metric approximated by these links. And uh, uh, so Reger wrote this, and uh, um, uh, this was actually proved uh, quite rigorously by putting the dots on, 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 on what I've said. So there are mathematical, uh, 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 there's a mathematical result uh, that says that this expression here, uh, if, if this discrete geometry approximates a continuous geometry uh, in, in a proper sense, um, uh, the, dis the difference between this and this is small in the approximation. Uh, this is just a sketch, right? I'm not giving you uh, so all the explicit formulas. You say limit. Huh? You say limit on the, on the number. Let me, let, let, let me be precise. So given a manifold with a four-dimensional metric, OK, and given a, a, an epsilon at, at your choice, you can always find a triangulation of it. OK, so you draw a triangulation. You measure the length of all the things. Out of the length, you compute this, uh, um, this uh, uh, quantity. This quantity is epsilon close to this. You can always find a triangulation such that this quantity is epsilon close to this. Of course, the triangulation has to be very refined if your epsilon is small. So in physical parlance, in the limit in which you refine the triangulation, uh, to infinity, to arbitrary fine triangulation, this converges to this. Okay? And this uh, triangulation goes to infinity in this sense. Refining the triangulation means making the L smalls. An infinite number of triangles. Yes, making an infinite number of triangles. Exactly. Of course, what you prove has nothing to do with infinite. What you prove is that for, you, for the epsilon, you can find find a number of triangles, but many enough for, uh, for making this minus this less than epsilon. OK? Which means that uh, you can think, and that's, of course, how people have been thinking for a long time, even if it doesn't work because of hundreds of reasons. Uh, you, could you can think of defining quantum gravity uh, by uh, taking a triangulation, integrating over all the metrics, namely integrating over all these uh, L variables, okay, uh, e to the i over h bar, this Regge action, uh, function of the L, which is this one. Right. So you have all these variables. And uh, this is defined for a fixed triangulation. So if, there's, if, you, if you, can, you can take the limit for a triangulation going to infinity, or if you want the number of, uh, uh, of, of, of tetraeda uh, going to infinity, then you can think of defining the theory this way. And now you see very clearly that there's no parameter here. There's no parameter to scale here. Why? For the same reason as the, the example uh, uh, described, the, the length uh, of these things doesn't have to be taken to zero because it is integrated over. These are the variables being considered, the quantum variable being considered. So we're not fixing a size 
of the triangulation, we are fixing just a number of triangles and integrating over all possible, uh, possible sizes, which what you were saying before. So it's not a truncation in a scale. It's, not, it's a truncation in uh, uh, the number of degrees of freedom uh, which we're considering. So we have a manifold. We, we say I approximate a geometry with a fixed number of degrees of freedom. And I have this expression. I can approximate it with more degrees of freedom. I have this expression. There's a truncation in number of degrees of freedom. So it's neither a cutoff, neither an ultraviolet cutoff, nor an infrared cutoff, nor there's no, there's no size here. It's just number of degrees of freedom. And uh, so this is regular calculus. When we do go to loop quantum gravity, it's the same story. And uh, um, the two complex and the graph on the boundary that we use is a truncation in number of degrees of freedom. It's neither a truncation for uh, uh, ultraviolet or for, or, or, or for infrared, because this length can be larger or smaller. And uh, the graph of loop quantum gravity, the, the j can be arbitrarily larger or arbitrarily small. The reason the j has a minimum is just because it's quantized. So you cannot go, go lower. Yes. Could you comment on why these approaches have failed? What are the problems with, uh, what are the problems with uh, these approaches? So just quantizing the length rather than... Uh... Uh, one of these, uh, if you try to start to do things more precisely, is that these L variables are not independent because there are triangular inequalities. So already you you face, you're integrating on things uh, whose uh, domain of variation uh, has an horrendously complicated shape because of all the inequalities. That's one, uh, one of the difficulties that, uh, um, uh, uh, that you have. Uh, people have worked on that. There's a literature on trying to do quantum regge calculus. Uh, in fact, good people worked on that, explored. It is never got much far. And more than writing that and trying to, uh, little has, been, has come out of that. Um, I think that this, uh, this triangular inequality is really the difficulty here. Um, once you rewrite this in terms of group variables, uh, you, and, uh, and uh, you, you, you free completely yourself from the triangular inequalities, you're on compact spaces, everything just runs and, and, and goes. So if you want, uh, loop quantum gravity is a way of doing this a little bit better. And in fact, in three dimensions, uh, Reggie himself with Ponzano wrote a version of, of, of that that landed on what is called Ponzano Reggie model, which is very much loop quantum gravity in three dimensions. Um, in fact, you can you go precisely to spin and intertwine us, and uh, I there's a chapter in the book about that. Uh, so loop quantum gravity, if you want, is a it's a it's a way of doing this properly and clearly. Good. Now there's something more I want to say about um, uh, Regia because it's going to play a role, um, which is uh, there is another way of uh, uh, this can be written by rearranging the terms. So this uh, angle here is a sum, uh, it, 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 apart from the 2 pi, has a sum of the um, one term per each uh, um, simplex around. So this can be uh, written as a sum of term per each simplex. And the area can be associated with the different simplices. So, so the regi action. Uh, can also be written as a sum of the simplices of uh, um, uh, uh, the sum on uh, the the triangles in the simplices of the area of the triangle um, times uh, this angle theta a function of the L times this angle theta, which is a function of the L, which is, this is the theta um, that depend on, 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 on the simplices and on the triangle, okay, this uh, uh, there. 
Um, this is interesting because, uh, you see, uh, e, to the d, e to the i s r is therefore the product on the simplices of this, uh, the sum over the, um, the triangles of the simplex area angle. Uh, and remember that, so this is the action i over h bar, i over h bar. So uh, this thing is the action for a simple, for a single simplex, right? Um, and remember that in the, in the spin network amplitude that I wrote, the total amplitude is a product of a, a action for a, for a single, amplitude for a single uh, simplex. So the question uh, is uh, the quantity I wrote um, yesterday and this morning, which is a function of uh, uh, spins um, uh, and uh, intertwiner on the boundary of the simple, of this, uh, uh, for simplex, uh, uh, is it related to this one in some manner? Right. Uh, there's some, some step to fill up. What, what does it mean to be related? But if it is related to this one, this is the, uh, the Regi action for a single simplex. When you put them together, you get the full Regi action, and you have this theorem that tells you that in some continuous limit, in the limit of which this thing of small gives to GR. Right? So we have reduced uh, uh, a way of analyzing this spin from uh, amplitude that I have uh, to a question about whether um, this vertex amplitude uh, is related to this thing here or not. Okay? And that's the last thing I want to discuss. Now, to do that, uh, there is a um, obstacle to overcome and uh, a technique to uh, develop which uh, to a good extent is, uh, uh, we know it thanks to Simone who just walked out of the room one second ago. Uh, and uh, it's the following. Um, so let me tell you what the problem is, what the solution is. There's a large literature on that. And uh, slowly, probably not today, I'm going to tell you the, uh, the details of the calculation. The, of the, the problem is that uh, uh, let's go back to the spin networks. <coughs> uh, gamma J L uh, V N. Okay. Uh, these do give geometrical information about the individual tetrahedra uh, in terms of the area and uh, uh, one quantity, which can be the volume, uh, or the quantity which is diagonalized in intertwined space. Okay? Uh, but these states um, do not have a direct geometric interpretations uh, for the following reason. Just think back to um, uh, a wave particle, psi of x. Um, these states, of course, are um, uh, states that uh, uh, diagonalize position, the states are states that diagonalize momentum, but this momentum is completely spread, this position is completely spread. Now, do we have states in which uh, uh, we can represent a particle with a given position x and a given momentum uh, p0 such that the spread, uh, that the spread is, is, is minimal? Yes, or is small? Yes, these are the uh, wave packets, right? Kind of wave packet center in x with a delta x, uh, which moves with a momentum p0, which is a certain uh, uh, spread. And we know how to describe these things here. These are semi classical state, wave packets, coherent state. Uh, if I fix the, if I look at the, uh, the, this, this, uh, the, the states here, 
Uh, the geometry of a single tetraedrum, as we discussed various times, is given by six numbers. I have only five numbers, so it means that some quantity is completely spread. So, can I write coherent states for the tetraedrum? Can I write a, a, a linear combination of these, uh, which gives me a given shape of a tetraedrum, regular or non regular? Um, which minimizes uh, the, 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 the necessary spread in the various quantities. Uh, that's the first, uh, uh, the first question. And um, uh, the answer is that this can be done and uh, with a nice technique, which once you see it, it's, uh, it's very pretty, it's very simple, but before it took quite a while to to, 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 to figure it out. Um, and it's largely due to uh, Trevalivin and Simone um, and, uh, and Simone Speciale. So let me describe uh, um, let me describe this technique. It is the following. We want um, let's be more precise. We want a, a state for the tetraedrum where let's say the four areas are sharp. Here is are sharp. Okay, but uh, uh, the intertwiner is uh, 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 it's, it, 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 it describes as best as possible a given geometry of the tetraedron, right? The intertwiner is in uh, an element of the invariant part of HJ1 tensor HJ4. Okay, and uh, uh, the idea to uh, to do so is uh, uh, think later about the invariant part and write coherent states here. Write coherent state in the representation themselves, uh, because remember that uh, uh, the operator else, the L operator that we have. Uh, uh, don't live here, live on the, these individual ones, uh, and have a nice geometrical interpretation of the normals of this. So if you can make the operator L uh, as semi-classical as possible, L are three operators, so I cannot diagonalize all three of them, but I can minimize the spread of all three of them. Here, 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 and here, I can describe a geometry in which the n uh, uh, the, the four uh, uh, normal to the surface uh, are semi-classical, are given, are minimally spread. And then I can take the invariant part of the state that I have. But take the invariant part of the state that I have uh, means integrating over the rotations. So it means considering these four directions up to common rotations. Let's do it, Let's do it explicitly and you see how this, uh, uh, this works. It takes one of these things. Hj. We know a basis of state there, of course, it's Jm. And uh, let's look at this Jm uh, state. Um, for generic M, the spread in, uh, we, we have Lx, L1, L2, L3 acting on here. These are all eigenstate of Lz, L3, right? By, by definition, this is a quantum number of that. But they have L1, L2, pretty much spread, not all of them. Think in terms of um, spherical harmonics, right? If the spherical harmonics, uh, uh, for generic M, you have sort of spherical harmonic like that. But if you take the minimal M or the maximal M, the spherical harmonic is it's here. So let's take the, the maximum of them, okay, J, J. So when m equals j, and uh, this is a spherical harmonic that sits, so this is z, this is x, this is y, that sits on the top of the sphere. And in fact, Lz is, is, L, LZ is sharp, Lx, Ly are minimally spread. And in fact, one can compute it explicitly, the spread, and it minimizes the, the spread. So we have a, at least one case in which we know um, a, uh, a state 
where this is minimum spread, this is minimum spread, this points, this is a, 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 as a fixed value, so we can interpret this as a semi-classical state, well, LZ point in the Z direction. It's good. So this represents a tetrahedron Well, this goes up in the, in the Z direction. Okay? Well, but we don't want to be attached to the Z direction. We want to be able to turn it. Well, let's turn it. We know how to turn it, because that's, this is a representation of SU2. Rotation act uh, on it. So given any, uh, given any unit vectors, n, um, I can always uh, choose a, 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 a rotation matrix, which I call n also, following the clear Simone notation, um, that turns the z direction into it. Okay, and of course I can do it in various ways. Let's say that this uh, I, I fix one, and then I can take my j j and rotate it with the j. Uh, 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 matrix, so with, with the action of uh, uh, rotated by this n, and this gives me j in the direction n. So I, I, I take this, I rotate it, I move this here, and this is my n uh, uh, vector, and uh, uh, there is a group element n that rotates in that direction. I use the same notation for the two. Okay? So this is defined. Uh, by uh, by this thing here. So, if you want um, J M uh, J M is a, a, a magnetic momentum number and N is a vert, so it's going to be given by D J uh, M J of the group element that rotate in the n direction. Okay. So now I have a state which corresponds to a vector point in a direction. I want four of them. So I just take four of them. Um, I take uh, J1, N1, tensor four of them, J4, uh, N4. Okay. This depends on four vectors. So I have a tetrahedron. I have these four vectors. I have four areas, J1, J4. And uh, this is a state which sits here. But now I want the invariant part. Well, I just rotate it, com do a common rotation, and I integrate over all possible rotations. The result I get, of course, is invariant in the common action of SU2 because I'm rotating. And it does not depend anymore on the actual four directions, but it depend, but it keeps the angle <coughs> invariant. It depends on the four vectors up to a common rotation, namely depends on the geometry of this thing. So I now define, I take this, I integrate of SU2, okay, in dh, h, h being an arbitrary SU2 uh, element, which act here in, on each one of them. And this I call uh, um, uh, J1, J2, J3, J4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, remembering that it doesn't really depend on these four directions. It, for, it depends on the four directions up to common rotation, so it actually depends on the angles between them. So it depends on the four areas and all the possible angles within them. And this is a state that corresponds to a given uh, geometry of a tetrahedron. Clear? And I have explicit formula. I can write it in terms of this, in terms of this matrix element, and so on and so forth. So now I can. Uh, uh, I can uh, ask a question, which is the following. Mm -hmm. Now take a four simplex, 
a given for simplex, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five tetrader. Uh, fix the geometry of this for simplex. Choose it. Okay. And uh, uh, the geometry of the four simplex determines the geometry of each one of these tetrahedra and determines the area of each of each phase. So I have uh, I can write a state which has uh, uh, the, all the areas sharp and all the geometries I want by putting in the intertwiner here 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 and here here in each one one of those states. Okay, and so I have a state that give, depends on the geometry of a four simplex. I'm not doing it explicitly, but uh, it just can be done on the basis of all the equations that, I, that were in the blackboard at some point. Now, this is a state on this spin network here. So I have the amplitude associated with that. The amplitude the, the, of, the, of the spin form amplitudes of the um, uh, uh, of this object here. And this is a number, okay? And uh, the question is, does it have anything to do with uh, the amplitude, uh, the 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 Regge amplitude, which is uh, um, I a over each bar, um, uh, the sum of uh, of the triangles of area of the triangle theta? Um, where of the triangle, where the area of the triangles are the area of the triangles of this geometry I started from. And uh, the theorem that uh, Barrett and his group uh, proved uh, says yes, this is uh, in the limit in which uh, this is large. So if the J is large enough, there is a direct relation within this, essentially. This is this plus its complex conjugate. I'm going to do it a little bit more precisely tomorrow. Uh, but the large J limit of this gives exactly this thing here. Which means that uh, this funny amplitude, which seemed to be uh, just defined in terms of combinatorics of groups and didn't seem to have anything to do with geometry on, of, of Eisen equations, in the large A limit, in the, in the large quantum number limit, so in Bohr classical limit, uh, gives, at least locally, for one tetraedrum, the regi action, which is the one that, in, in a suitable uh, limit in which you, uh, you refine the term relation and give generativity. I've given you the sketch of what is the core of the uh, Barrett theorem and uh, how to to think about it, you have to use this uh, current state. So tomorrow, I'll be a little bit more precise about this current state, and I'll give you more detail about the, uh, this, uh, this theorem. Now it's 45, so I'll stop here. So, question. Yeah. So uh, I see an obstacle to doing this, which uh, is not, does not have to do with a coherent state. Yes. Which is the fact that in a regi calculus, when you compute a curvature, you have to hinge around uh, maybe a bone or whatever dimension you are in. Um, and that, in terms of the dual graph, is non-local because this could be an arbitrary long cycle that you need in order to compute the curvature. Whereas you, you say that A is local. Yeah. So, good. So um, what you're saying is that um, the curvature here is 2 pi minus, but the 2 pi is conventional, uh, uh, the sum of this and this and this and this angle. So you need all, this, all, all, all the values around. In fact, no doubt that the, the, the curvature here, you have to know all these links here and all these links here. 
Um, so let me call R the curvature there. Um, is uh, it's gonna be two pi minus uh, the sum over uh, let me say n of theta n. Okay. Now it's the the action is going to be local in the curvature, so it's going to be a, a sum of these terms. Nothing forbids me to take this sum and this sum and to uh, view locality as uh, uh, summing this something here and 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 here. Okay, so locality is in the wedges, if you want, not in the point. It's just in, I'm summing all these things. Okay. And then nothing prevents me to rearrange the sum by, the, you, you do all these games all the time, uh, by summing these three together, by considering these three together and associated to this point, these three together associated to this point. And so now I'm thinking in terms of the dual okay, and to this vertex I associate this term, this term, this term. To this vertex, I associate this term, this term, this term. I don't see the curvature in the single vertex, obviously, now, because where is the curvature? But the action of a single vertex combined, some of the other action is the same as summing over the point where the curvature happens to be. So it's just a rearrangement of terms. Maybe it refers to, to if you have, for example, a band, like this, so it's a different topology. And you can discretize them. So a two-dimensional band, you have a, a stripe, and you close it. You can discretize with triangle, and at that point, the dual would make a link, but it will not be a link around a node. It, is it right? Uh, that, that's a question I asked, I asked earlier. In some I'm other confused, sir. Uh, no, I, I was asking about this question today. Oh, OK, OK. Oh, because I remember that one, and I was wondering uh, after, after you made the question. So, so this answers your question. OK, yes. So it's really a rearrangement of things. It's, 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 it's a good question, which is something that confused us in, at the beginning, right? We have these flat things. And we are saying, well, we associated the, an action to a flat thing. Where's curvature? <laughs> uh, well, its point is that we have a number associated with that. And we, you, when you sum all together, this knows about the, the deficit angles uh, because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a sum of angles here. So if you want, when you sum all together, you can put the A together and you get the sum of the theta. Good. Thank you. Can I make um, another question? Uh, maybe you will talk about this tomorrow, but I don't know because I want to be here tomorrow. Okay. So oh, no, no, nothing on Friday. Friday